five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it's Monday night. It's Weird Yard. It's the Monday Club with Jenny Kirk. Yay! <laughs> if you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. Because every train there ever was has gathered there together because today's the, the day, day that, that Jenny does, does the, the Monday, Monday Club. Club. Yay! I mean, hello to you. I'd be reading the comments right now if Zoe wasn't so busy making a racket that she... Uh, I was making sure that everything was yeah, working. You do, you do your special dance. I will. Do, do. Right. So, I believe Gandalf has a word for us. A Monday club is never late, Toto Wagons, nor is it early. It arrives precisely when it needs to. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, we've got uh, Ridgeway Park, OO, Mike at Putnam Junction, Wamgok, Jerry BBR, Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath, Don Loco, Francis Wadsworth, Mouse Hole Rail, Southern Train Girl, Patrick Ling, Sarah Davis, Wyvern Model Railway, uh, Harry Sedgwick, uh, George, Robert Becking, uh, Hot Dog Pilot 63, who says, quick, hit the, what's that, AZ5 button. <laughs> uh, Egg Rider, Wyvern Model Railway, Mark Wilson. <laughs> he says, Gandalf is late. <laughs> hey, Gandalf is never late, Mark Wilson, nor is he early. <laughs> I arrive precisely when I mean to. Thanks, Gandalf. <laughs> uh, Richard Swiderski, Houston WHAP, Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath, Bo Minnick says, OK, did everyone bring, anyone bring the trains? Is that actually hitting the, um, the tunnel? I don't know. Now we've got something that's vibrating. Yes, we have. Um, could we uh, ask one question, Jen? What? Jenny, do we have a sponsor today? The Monday Club comes in association with Broker Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. So there we are, and if anybody's wondering just what the Roca models look like, we actually have Roca. coming Roca. But I don't correct me when I'm in full flow. How dare you? The the Roka models are there. Look. Yes. There okay. They are. Okay. They're right. You, as well. you, you may shut up now, now, cupboard monkey. But <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep. Uh, also, on a forthcoming episode of What's Neat this week, which we recorded on Saturday, and uh, there's a full lowdown on the auto pack wagons. But um, uh, Roka <laughs> models very very kindly sent three of them over now there's five different body styles and the standout for me is actually uh, the method used to produce the sides it looks yes. like it's etched brass <laughs> but it's injection molded plastic and it's got incredible fidelity to the point where you can see through it I, it's phenomenal mm. you can see the internal detail from the outside through those holes. Which actually means they'd be a great candidate to fill up with model cards. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Uh, ben Tullett says, wow, I am amazed they are working on a UK outline layout. Uh, they are doing just fine actually. We've got some fairly generous clearances, but... Oh, I see what the uh, vibration is. What? See that little uh, platform on there? Yeah. They're hitting it. Which platform? That was there. Oh, so they're actually scraping they're it. They're scraping along the top. Right, in that case, I'm going to have to bring these round and stop them. <laughs> because they are actually scraping the layout, and I don't want to damage the roof. What was happening? Yeah, especially when you have to have a look at them later on for a review. Yes. So, here's the thing about these. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Those American locomotives, if I can, if you just stop it so that it's on the roving cam. When it turns up. Is it turning uh, up? No, oh, you, look, it's you broken. have broken it, right? So I'll put it onto the front one then. So, 
this uh, big loco here is huge compared to British ones. It's a big bulky baby, isn't it? it it's is a chunky bulky. monkey. Yes. And I those, love that horn. <laughs> and the funny thing is, <laughs> those wagons that it's pulling dwarf it. <laughs> it's huge. Absolutely. It's amazing. I was really, really impressed when we got to see them. You saw them in the uh, advert at the start, uh, the sponsorship even. Yeah. And uh, the, I thought when I first saw those, saw, saw those, when I first saw those, that we'd been sent photographs that had been used as reference material <laughs> for making the models. Yeah. But we hadn't. It's the actual model. I was amazed. Mm. Anyway, great to see you guys. Can I just say one, one more thing? What? I believe... Les Cliff and perhaps someone else as well oh. have a birthday today. Oh. And you know what that means. Oh, yes. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. You live in a zoo. You look like a monkey. And you smell and like one too. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Les. Yeah, Bluegrass Rail fan. The real auto racks are huge. Yes, Absolutely. They it are. turns out they're um, actually just on that little bit too big to go around okay. where yard. Yeah, so, the auto racks are three decks high. They are. And absolutely. They're absolutely. And they, they really do push but the. The weirdest thing is they're quite gauge. thin, aren't they? Are they, they are. They look thin because of the height. An, yeah, that's because of the height. And they push the loading gauge to the max. To the max. To the max. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Extreme. Iron Horse Railway says, wow, look at the size of those racks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we were just discussing earlier on that if Iron Horse Railways released their own range of scents, we think <laughs> that the name of it would be Lingering. <laughs> Linger by Iron Horse. Yes. <laughs> You'll Jane... find it on the shelf next to Inspired. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah, um, what are those, Jen, on the side? Wait, will you just let me talk? Those are things. So, so Go on, it. then, you talk. Big hello to James Pets. Great to see you. We've got Mark Wilson, J94. Um, and Bo Minnick says, I doubt you could run real auto racks in the UK. The things are huge. Turns out you can't run them on this layout. Because I they're... bet we could run them, but only once, because we'd have to pay for the damage. Well, there's an awful lot, like, there's a video that does the rounds of an auto rack train that's been misrouted at a rail yard underneath an overbridge, uh, which is peeling at their roofs off, caused uh, millions of dollars worth of damage. Leslie Gilpin Railway says they are narrow due to the 85 foot or more length. And um, so it's, oh. it's really just an illusion, but they are huge, absolutely right. huge. And David, it's my model railway, says they push the loading gauge to 11. Billy <laughs> loves that. <laughs> yes. Billy, the Billy thumbs up of approval. Larry Rogers, big hello to you. Uh, Iron Horse Railway says, oh, I'm so thrilled to find out that I am the topic of heated debate during my absence, I think. <laughs> oh, we tease because we love you, my dear. We do, we do. Uh, we got <laughs> B2000RO Toys Channel says, hi Jenny and Zoe, my second attempt at a G-scale brake express coach is nearly complete in terms of building. Need to build two composites soon before painting. Nice. Excellent. Uh, big hello to Ivor Junction, Ryan Tune, Krista Duke, who says, It's also my birthday. Today I've had McDonald's for tea. Happy birthday to you. Squash tomatoes and stew. Bread and butter in the gutter. Happy birthday to you. Um, I've lost my space now. Uh, Too many jokes about huge racks, says Naive yeah. Gage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry <laughs> I would not W. Grant. To the of making them myself. <laughs> Larry W. Grant says hi to all from <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Big hello, hello. to you. Uh, we've got Winston Busby, even to you. Mac Navi says, funny, it's also my birthday today. <gasps> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. You, you live in a zoo. You act like, like a monkey. monkey. And you smell like, like one too. <laughs> <laughs> you do know that's one of our sponsors. <laughs> yes, but we tease because it's funny. Yes, we tease, sir. No, please don't pull the plug. We tease, sir. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Naive Gage says, too many jokes about huge racks on the the Monday Club, but we're not stooped to the depths. I've already right. said that. We'll read the highlighted one out there. Highlighted. B. Mozza says we will have a new Metropolitan Railway body at Doncaster. Excellent. Looking Everyone forward loves to a that. New body. 
Leslie Gilpin Railway says my birthday was 13 days ago. And ah, so that falls over into having to have been in last week's Monday Club, I'm afraid. And uh, late. Yes, a late. A mm. Monday Clubber is never late. They can't hear you. Bangin, nor is he early. He writes precisely when he means to. Yeah, thanks, Gandalf. Now push off. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jennifer Horton, good evening to you. Anfield Road layout in the loft as well. We've got a really good turnout. Don't forget to uh, tickle the like button and share the stream as well. Mac Navi says, lovely, Jen and Zoe. <laughs> so today we thought we would talk about diorama planning. Now we've had over the years some amazing little dioramas shared with us here on the Monday Club. And I thought we'd talk a little bit about planning them. And in some respects, dioramas are a really great way of tackling some scenic skills in a small, manageable space, especially if you don't have a lot of room for storage or anything like that. But by the same token, they can introduce uh, problems of their own. Um, most notably, it's a case of, well, what to actually... Have we lost another camera? Blooming have as well. So we've lost two cameras. That's, that's irritating, to say the least. But um, it's about as well trying to... Have we... Uh, um, is everything actually running? I'm just looking around. I'm sure that... I think it's an illusion because the auto racks aren't going round now. And James Pets, absolutely. Dioramas can be very very cute but it's also very difficult to decide what to put in and what to leave out and um, it's um, one of the areas of planning a diorama so it doesn't look crowded but you've got the focal points in the detail what are the ones actually talking to McNavi the one the micro 009 one or is it HOE that uh, McNavi shared with us a few weeks back really impressive tiny tiny little thing um, but a fully functional model railway with a train that just keeps going round and round. And you've got to decide, do you want something that works? Do you want something as a scenic piece? I know Les and I made one which was kind of a, a self-contained scenic thing. Uh, Krista Duke says, TARDIS spotted by the steam, steam locomotives. In Deedy Doody, yes. Um, I don't know what... Oh. In doodly doodly do. In doodly doodly. And uh, I think that you can actually... Um, you can actually spot both of them in that view. Um, so there we are, a little, a little hint. Uh, TARDIS on the track side at left upper level, says Richard Swiderski. Krista Dukes is TARDIS spotted. Uh, Harry Sedgwick says... Uh, uh, after Saturday, Steam Charter at Carlisle, going on Sunday to Kendall. Uh, Zach Farnworth, big hello to you. J. Paul Anderson, great to see you. Uh, uh, Sarah Davis says, are both TARDI? I don't think that's what it'd be TARDIS is because it's an acronym. It's not uh, based on a Latin word, so it doesn't follow the same process for plurals. Uh, but are they next to each other? They're not next to each other. They are actually technically in a line. If you look immediately up, <laughs> you might just see the top of the other one. Uh, Iron Horse Railway says, I've got a terrible delay on the stream this evening. It's almost a minute behind. So does that mean you're getting pictures um, when when the sound doesn't match up or something like that? That's very, very strange. So, um, yes, diorama planning is really, really difficult. But J. Paul Anderson, you're one of the past masters at doing dioramas. And, oh, that camera's still working. No trains on it, but it's still working. Um, we've seen quite a few from yourself. Really impressed. But for me, when doing a diorama, I like to pick one thing to use as a focal point. And it's something that... What on earth have you got there? Well, the cupboard monkey is a dioramas, I'm going to build the uh, base kit for one of those Kato N-Gage ones. Hmm. <laughs> Jerry P. The Art says, Iron Horse Railway switched to one and a quarter speed. Eventually you'll catch up. Big hello to uh, 56XX. Great to see you in. Uh, sorry, Valley's 56XX. Uh, great to see you. Um, but yes, when I do a, um, a, a scene, a diorama, 
I like to pick one thing that will be the focal point. Now, oh, um, the TARDIS is, um, one TARDIS is now in shot. Uh, yeah, Richard Sturzky's TARDIS behind steam locomotive. Mm, no, I, I think that's from the, the previous scene. Um, so, big hello to Katie Walker as well. Great to have you in. Uh, Lynette 12 dd good evening to you. Uh, Richard Swiderski, yep, TARDIS is at the bottom of the chat. Oh, there it is. So, um, it's, um, I, I really like to have one thing as a focal point, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, a building, although a building can be a very good focal point on a diorama. Um, I have also used bridges as well, certainly a structure of some description, but you can make it a natural structure, and I've seen some great dioramas that have actually used something like a big feature tree with a lot of detail, a lot of, say, root structure root as feature. the uh, focal point. I've seen waterfalls and water features can also be used as a, um, a really good feature. We've lost another camera, by the way. Uh, well, if it keeps happening, we'll have to sort things out. Yeah, we'll sort this out, <laughs> boys. In. So tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen... Yes, the cupboard monkey. I'm building Hard one work. of the Pico Diorama kits. They're tiny, and uh, the idea... Not Pico, Kato! Oh, it's written you... on the label, Kato. Mm. I'm going to see how this goes. So, surely, you need, you need to keep the bag. Uh, shouldn't do, no. Just in case you want to... Oh, you just dropped something. Yes, so it comes with a piece of set track... Mm. Tiny piece, uh, and it, it's all ready to go. And then you place it onto blocks, uh -huh. and you basically get the whole thing with a few instructions. And I think it's going to be fun to make. Mm. So since we were talking about dioramas, I thought, right, today I'm building the diorama. But what detail are you going to put in there? That, that's well, with this one, I actually picked up some N-gauge Tardises N -gauge. from eBay. Right. And I'm thinking of uh, getting a little bit of uh, modelling foam from the range mm -hmm. or something like that and carving uh, or whittling a little Dalek spaceship right. that's crashed into a wall. Uh -huh. and the Doctor's there as well. Right. And uh, it'll just be like a scene from Doctor Who that a train is happening to go through. All right. Do you get any detailed stuff in there? No. Or is it just purely the base? It's purely the base. And all that you need to set this thing up. Right, okay. So, interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. When we were at Worley on the Kato stand, <laughs> they had some really, really interesting fully built ones. And it really does fire up the imagination. <laughs> James Pett says, those engaged TARDISes, they're engaged on the outside, O gauge on the inside? Something like that. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, Peter Jackson Cheetle Heath says Kato Diorama Kits. <laughs> Not noticed those before. Yeah. Um, Mel says G'day everyone from Australia. G'day, well, G'day, Mass. Um, and uh, so Naive Gage says Yay for the N Gage TARDIS. Somebody said, I think it was Sarah Davis said uh, it's the plural of TARDIS. Space, um, uh, was it uh, Space and, and uh, Space and dimension in space. time and relative dimension in dimension or dimensions in space, depending on the series, uh -huh. uh, which I suppose doesn't actually have a plural. So a plural of TARDIS would be TARDIS, because you're still talking about time and the relative dimensions in space. <laughs> Look at you. Although most fans just call them TARDISes. Yeah, that that. To my ear, seems about the best. We were having a debate because um, of course you were. Somebody called them Tardi, and I pointed Tardy. out that as it's an, as it's an acronym rather <laughs> than um, a um, a Latin derived word. It wouldn't follow that plural convention. No, it wouldn't. So these are actually fairly chunky pieces of wood. This is uh, mm. definitely going to be stable. And it's laser and cut. Yes. So you've already managed to push one bit out. So just what do all down. those bits give you? What, what are they for? This is to create the base. Ah. You've got the four little circles on the bottom that go on as the feet. Right. So that right. it's uh, got a nice uh, firm base. Then you put in the sides. Uh, I'll just 
show the instructions you put in the same. Oh, very straightforward. I think I'm going to make this in a few minutes. And then I'll uh, take it apart again and glue it together. Right. And make right. sure that it's all right. Okay. Um, and because it then... doesn't look like I need any screws or anything. So I thought I'll just do it. No, in the no, it would be just like push fit and glue. Yeah. Um, so a very, very good basis for a small, like a micro diorama in end gauge. Yes, and every single piece is labelled. Uh -huh. So I can just follow the instructions. And it's a great way, or especially if you've not got a lot of space. I like the idea of these, where you could actually put them together. So you could make a layout out of lots of little dioramas and run your trains through yes. them. And I thought that that was a great idea. I loved that. When I saw it on uh, that uh, video you did of the uh, Model Railway exhibition, I thought, hmm, mm, that's the type of thing I want. Because it means that I can uh, not worry about having them in the same order and just take them out. So you must have out, been really chuffed when I rocked up with two of them. Yes, I was amazed because I looked I at them and thought, like I've, got, I've got to try these things. Raymond Legg says, hi, hello, uh, so, hi, hi fellow model barn lovers. Big hello to you as well. Wardle Road is in. It's great to see you. I hope I find you well. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, Jennifer Horton says, I wonder if the Rugby Loco testing station could be made as a diorama with the DCC concept rolling roads. Now, that is an interesting <laughs> idea. Um... Yeah, actually, I like that. That is that is one to think about, maybe. Um, Mark Wilson says, Doctor Who is not a Time Lord. He's Susan's granddad. Doctor Who is not a Time Lord. He's a very naughty boy. Um, yes, I think that the, ta <laughs> the other Time Lords would... Uh, would, would agree with yes, that, because yeah. he keeps pinching the TARDIS and running away. Yeah, he just... Also, he once, one time, accepted becoming president and then ran away, leaving them with no head of state. Yeah. Paul Murphy asks, Jenny, did you have a good weekend? What did we do this weekend? We visited your parents. And, yeah, I feel uh, like we've been we had busy. had our nephew I, visit. That was it. That was it. That's why we feel a bit busy. Right. Um, also, so, you looked after me a fair bit because I've been not well. Yes, the cupboard monkey has been ill. B. Mozza says, the old CRM club had two sets of boards. One a double O, the other ON30. Um, What's ON30? <laughs> ON30 is an American narrow gauge. Right. Um, I think it's, it's an O gauge, and it represents what would effectively be... Um, is it 30, 30 inches gauge, or is it 3 feet, something like that? Right. Um, <clears throat> so it's a bit like... In the UK, we have O sixteen point five. Um, but I suspect that it would be the equivalent of something like O ten point five or O twelve. Right. Interesting. Um, so, uh, Iron Horse Railway says, Evening, Ollie, lad. How's life at schools? Um, Ollie, have you gone back to school? Oh, my goodness. And is it on a course with work. I well, be like, careful and yeah. to remember to revise. Harris Tweed <laughs> says, How is the water feature coming on? Still got running water with it. No, that's all fixed, actually. We fixed the leak. <laughs> um, B. Mosser says that um, ON30 is the same as 016.5. Right, I'm with you. Uh, DJK666 says we had an ON30 layout at Worley. Bo Minnick says three foot gauge, um, but using um, o, but US O gauge. So um, it's a bit like, yeah. You mean they've got a different uh, version of O gauge? I don't know. <laughs> um, Charles Walsh says ON30 runs on HO track. Uh, DJK666 says it's O scale, but that version of 30 inch gauge track. So that's 12, 24, so that's 2 foot 6. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, it's basically like what. Uh, o sixteen point five is to O, then O N thirty is to um, uh, American O. It's a bit like the difference, I guess, between O O nine and H O E. A big whoa, big thank you to Nuts and Bolts seventy seven. Oh my goodness! Who has very very generously donated so forty dollars on goodness, the that is uh, amazing. super chat. Thank you so much. Says hello to all. This is for Zoe's Engage project. Aww. Oh, you're which, too kind. Which man. reminds me as well. I need to thank some people who very, very kindly um, sent uh, some money through PayPal.me. 
So uh, just give me one moment. And while Jen is uh, doing that, so I'm going to show you what I've got so far. So this all came together incredibly quickly. That's uh, the first couple of pieces done, and there's the base. Now all I've got to do is put this top bit on here on the right way and work out what's going on. So Ward writes says, what is this new project? We're building an O-gauge, not O-gauge, we're building an N-gauge uh, layout, and it's going to be... Uh, I, I'm going to do it in a diorama style as a... It's going to be very, very small. Well, no, they, the, what I'm doing now is I'm putting together one of those Kato diorama blocks. This is my first attempt at a layout. And it's going to be a tiny, tiny diorama. That's basically yeah. it. Can I just the jump in? Now. Can I just jump in to thank That's Charles amazing. Walsh, who very, very generously <laughs> through PayPal.me sent uh, he sent eleven pounds fifty eight, and then he immediately sent a further seven pounds. Oh my goodness! So thank you so much to Charles Walsh, who says, "No, you had a flood. This is to uh, help." And also Mark Wilson. I think I may have name checked you last week, but just in case, Mark Wilson, thank you so much for sending something via PayPal.me ten pounds. Very very kind of you thank you so much um guys you're far too generous man you you really you blow my socks off with this dominic Z, big hello to you our kick line correspondent says uh oh it's just gone off the top of the screen so um, i'll bring it back on yeah 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 um getting a revel Re union, a pacific. union pacific railroad big boy locomotive and h oh, that's oh, the plastic oh, kit that's the big one yeah yeah nice yeah. that'll take you a bit of time um, Warbler Productions, big hello to you. Says been here since the start, just really tired. I didn't get any sleep last night. I do sympathise. I suffer from insomnia from time to time as well, and it's not good, is it? Um, you can make it so it scrolls now. White wall. Oh, it, you have done white wall wheels. What, oh, it's just gone off the top. <laughs> um, so big hello to you, white wall wheels. Lee D Holden, good evening to you. It's great to uh, uh, see you there. David Scott as well. Um, so we've got some, we've got really, really uh, good uh, attendance tonight here on the Monday Club. So um, great to see you. Don't forget to tickle that like button and share the stream as well. And we're going to be trying to do an hour of your videos today because uh, we have so many. We're so far behind. Um, and I think it would be great for us to catch up just a little bit. So um, at um, eight o'clock, we're going to start doing the uh, the videos. Uh, Dominic says, says, Jenny and Zoe, can you also add a a Goofs nightclub on the end scale layout? Uh, we can certainly look into that. I don't know what that is. Uh, Nigel Cole says, I lay awake at night thinking about my insomnia. Sometimes that is just <laughs> what insomnia feels like, it must be said. Uh, uh, Bo Minix says, no, O scale is 1 to 48 everywhere. Most here in the US, ON30 and HON3 <laughs> represent Denver, Rio Grande, narrow gauge, running in the Rocky Mountains in the late 19th, early 20th century. Right. Um, so that's uh, I, uh, based around, uh, there's a preserved line running out of Durango, from what I, I believe, uh, I re recall. I think you make some of these places up just to oh, see if I'm Somebody said runaway wagon. Wouldn't surprise me if there is. Um, I don't see one. On oh the yes, now. I do. It'll just all right. I'll pick it back <laughs> up again. Um, John JMC says two hundred and thirty-five watching, but only ninety-five likes. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's naughty. Well, you know, people are allowed to watch without liking. And um, we've lost another camera. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what's happened here. We're having tremendous trouble. Paul Murphy has a great tip. Anyone who has trouble sleeping, just lie on the edge of your bed. You'll just drop off. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, we're being shafted by the cameras again. So, I'm going to have to do the old hot swap technique. So, just to try and get a camera back here. Oh, you've seen my big flabby belly. Full of jelly. So, uh, I didn't know you were Santa. Oh yes, I, I do moonlight as Santa these days. Well, everyone's going to have a gig. <laughs> we have lost another camera. Have you just broken everything? Uh, do we... We are by night. Yeah, you've lost all of the cameras now, haven't you? Uh, 
it would appear that we have one camera left out of five. <laughs> this is just pathetic. Okay, well, we're going to stick with what we've pathetic. got. Pathetic. So, unfortunately, we, um, we've we been screwed. Uh, <laughs> uh, Charlie Chimp says, Billy's replacement cameras. Yeah, <laughs> and James Pet's We're Yard by Night. Absolutely. We don't uh, mean it. It's just, uh, we're really, really bad at our jobs, it seems. James Pet says, this is suboptimal. Absolutely. So I don't know what's going on here, apart from the fact that windows and the drivers for these um, these cameras don't seem to get on. They're rubbish. They're made of pants. Um, you love pants. Yeah. Especially big floppy clown pants. James Pett says, I see that the TARDIS has moved slightly in front of the LMS Express locomotive. Absolutely. Although that's actually... Let me just check which one. It didn't move slightly. She knocked it. <laughs> Princess Margaret Rose um, in BR Maroon. Um, Warbler Production says, The Monday <laughs> Club now presented as a podcast. <laughs> uh, as a podcast, even. Um... Naive Gage asks, why can't you get cameras restarted during a stream? I honestly don't know. Once it loses a camera, it decides that it's just not there, even yeah. when it clearly is. And when you switch to it, the light on the camera comes on. It's just it, it, we don't get a signal. It's very, very peculiar. It's a quirk of how it's all coded. And when you try to talk to the ops people about this issue, they act like there's nothing wrong. So, I've actually had a lecture from them about how, no, it's perfectly fine and uh, there is nothing wrong whatsoever. I think. But, dude, I'm telling you there is. What you need to do is send them a link to this stream and go, so you tell me what's wrong with the cameras here. When well, they play this one user moment. around, that's what they'll say. And that's what really annoys me, so I don't even bother asking so them. Uh, so who is this? Is this at Logitech? No, uh, OBS is uh, oh, a OBS. non-profit. It's the ones that do it in their own spare time, but they there's a problem <laughs> with developers that uh, <laughs> they're not arrogant. exactly the most um, not customer friendly for... people. No, no. <laughs> they're used to talking to other developers, and that, and not to people who don't know. Yeah. So, uh, Princess Margaret Rose was the LMS number six two zero three, the first production princess royal class. Um, yeah, it's a lovely model, and she's not the most current or up to date uh, of. Hornby uh, Princess Coronation class, uh, sorry, Princess Royal class, um, but I bought it second hand really, really cheaply. It is DCC ready, so obviously it has been DCC fitted, um, and I actually quite like it. I would buy more from that particular generation quite happily. James Pett says, the trouble is that doing technical support in your spare time is very, very non-fun. Yes. So, well... Flippantly, I would suggest that perhaps they should consider doing it properly first time. <laughs> You've also got to remember that Windows has had no standards for so long that uh, it's very difficult to try and implement any now. Yeah, and the problem is often you get it working and then uh, and someone Windows. comes along and thinks they're happy and, and, and better than everyone else and wants to do it their way. Yes, you can't yeah. do it their way. Because everyone else is doing it the right what way. What glue are you using there? It seems poly cement works because the Card glue didn't. Uh, poly cement will not work. We'll see what happens, won't we? It'll come apart again. No, 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 no. Don't make that noise. I hate <laughs> it when you make that noise. So, um, planning of a diorama. Essentially, um, step one, I guess, is do you want it to work? Um, and I've seen some great working dioramas. Now, and now we don't mean that <laughs> as in uh, something bad. It's like. Do you, do you want it to work or do you want it to look pretty? No, it's like, do you want it to work as in, are you going to have things running on it? Yes? Hmm. Oh, um, we have just had an alert that there is a really, really good deal at Rails of Sheffield tonight. DCC Concepts Locomotive Wiring Bundle Pack at 62% off. So if wow. you're doing a lot of DCC wiring, it's a full colour-coded set of wires... Uh, if you do a search for DCW-LWP, um, it's reduced from £60.40 oh, to £22.95. <laughs> £22. Uh, the shuttle diesel, all the wagons are off. Off? They've come off. They're there. Behind you. Uh, doing a good impression of being on. Well, they weren't before. Yeah. They really had come off, I saw them. 
Did you? Did I you? saw them with my own eyes. Yes, you saw them wrongly with your own eyes. You're the one that saw them yeah. wrong. You know, yeah, you saw them back the on. 25 does actually catch them up. Angel Share, Model Railway, great to see you. The Try Hard, big hello to you, has just started. My 12-hour shifts are watching you from work tonight. Any chance of an extended version today to keep me company? Unfortunately, I've got work very, very early in the morning. So we are, um, are you taking 20 tons of turnips to Tesco? Nope, not at all. So, unfortunately, uh, we will be having to finish on time tonight. Um, but, you know, you know normally I would, but... Uh, but tonight uh, you can't. Mm. Paul Murphy says, the weir yard is a fantastic layout. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, don't tell her that. She'll get, <laughs> like, a, a big yeah. grin. She'll go, hmm. Mousehole Rail says, speaking of DCC concepts, I bought some of the Legacy Models rail joiners this morning. And... Uh, DJK666 says, I've just knocked up two wood frames for the start of a layout. Just need a little bit of fettling and then I can show the progress. I'll start a video channel once this is done. And yeah, trying to go back to a uh, diorama building. Um, it's uh, uh, The thoughts are, does it actually, do you want it to be running? So have it like something like a train moving? Or the other thing is an animation of some description. So you could, for example, as a diorama... You could have, say, level crossing gates and have them op able to open and shut. Or you could have, um, maybe you have a signal on a piece of line that can change aspect. Or even something like a Ferris wheel. There's some really, really good kits available of fairground things. And they might make a really interesting focal point for a diorama. Um, you could also go down the route of having... Um, lit animations so uh, uh, the uh, scale model scenery do some great flickering bonfire effects and they can produce a really quite pleasant focal point too uh, you can have a water wheel that's another good one Backman do do in their scene craft range uh, really really nice uh, water wheel hey, uh, shut that off. just see if we can get that camera no no so yeah. There you go. All right. So, the cupboard monkey has completed the diorama base build. It's incredibly simple, but it's effective. And look at the space it's got for putting what wires and all pieces for the other types. What? So, if you if you're building a curved one, is that? Yeah, that is. You get this standard thing, uh -huh. which has most of the uh, shapes that you need on it, mm. and that will build. Uh, oh, I types. see. So yeah. there's like internal um, holes for wiring. It's almost like you should have put the wires in first. <laughs> oh no, I see. It's got access underneath. It's got access panels. So um, I would suggest. Uh, what about a little flickering bonfire effect? Mm. You can probably find you one in my bits and pieces box. And the best part is you also get this. What is that? A piece of styling form. And is that for carving out your scenery? Yeah, it actually says. Uh, it's got the ja the instructions are in Japanese, but it's very very simple. Uh, that it's got space for styling foam and all sorts. You just cut it out to the shape that you want. Yeah, and it's an interesting idea. What I like is um, the fact that you can join these together. Yes. And actually make up a running ra model railway out of a series of dioramas, and it may be something that you could do. With like a whole group of friends, maybe each yeah. build small dioramas, and then come together and uh, come and together. To... Um, Jen's just going to ignore what I just said. James then. Pets, <laughs> yeah, water doesn't scale well because the surface tension, and also what you've got to remember is that the molecule size is wrong. When you scale things down, they're still made out of full-size material atoms. And so I've just popped out the holes. There's your holes for the screws and everything. Okay. Which holes? On the top. There and there. Okay. To screw down your piece of track. So does it come with the screws? Yeah, the screws are in this little bag. Aren't you supposed to do that from underneath? Yes, you are. Doesn't say that. Um, what you need to do oh, I suppose you can, yeah. is screw the track on. Screw the track on <laughs> first. <laughs> you screw the track so on. So you get that screwed on. Yeah, go on. You okay. do that. Right. You do that. Go on. Oh, you want to. You need to. 
Uh, there's my screwdriver kit. The piece of wood is the correct way up there at that point. So you're going to need... Are they crossheads? Uh, fillets for the people who are currently twitching. Yes. Uh, uh, right, okay. So uh, a uh, fillet screwdriver. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. I don't have any engage bits and pieces. I do. I've been collecting all sorts. Have I've you? got a packet of pigs downstairs and everything. Oh yeah, piggly wiggly, piggly wiggly. Or oh, as I said to Jen when I I got it, I just put an extra in it. Here, smell my pigs. Three <laughs> B Rail, thank you so much. Very very generously donated ten pounds oh, on the super you. chat. Thank you so much. So it's evening, Jenny and Zoe, for the fun. That's you guys are far too generous, kind of man. It, it, you always blow me away with your generosity. Absolutely. And Wow, uh, that came together so quickly. Right, so now you can glue that. <laughs> glue it back on. G give it a, a quick spritz of glue, and then um, you, you should be all right. So um, thank you so much. Um, ben Tell it says, Caravans rocking always seems to be a funny working feature on the layout. Yes. <laughs> I suppose so, uh, but yeah, and before anybody goes, oh, that's such a dirty, dirty, smutty thing. It could always be uh, from an episode of Father Ted where they're doing um, a river dance in the caravan. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, with, um, what's his name? Graham Norton. Can't remember which father he played. <laughs> um, James Pett says, I saw animated chickens pecking on a layout at Wally. Yes, there, um, there's actually, I can't remember whether it's Knock or Prize or some, somebody like that um, does a kit for doing that. And it's a really interesting little diorama you can build in. And I just love stuff like that. Right, I'm going to see if I can actually move the, um, the auto packs around where they're going to actually be sort of in view. I love that. There you are. The whole thing, I've, I've been holding on to it because it's uh, still drying, but there you are. I've built that in what, 10 minutes? Now I get to furnish it and I get to decorate it and it's all just done. I am really, really impressed with this. Kato, you've done a, a great job. You've got someone who was kind of interested in modelling to actually build some, a base board and get started on a layout. Here is my first layout. There it is. It, that, that's my first layout. And it's just there. And it looked, and it makes me happy to have accomplished something so quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm very pleased. So I know Mark Wilson is uh, doing London Par Paddington and for his next trip. He's brought a Wolfers kit. It's just disappeared off the top. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, and anybody's wondering, yesterday plus one, from nine o'clock you can watch the next episode of Hornby A Model World. But Mark Wilson says, for the, my next trick after I finish London Paddington, of course Mark Wilson being one of the kings of diorama building, says I've bought a Walther's Diner, which while I, I will attempt to make a lit diorama with a classic American car meet. Oh, that'd be nice, and certainly at the moment... Uh, Mark, uh, um, in the DCC Concepts clearance sale, they're selling wiring harnesses to be able to put headlights and tail lights <laughs> into model cars. Uh, they've that sounds good. Well, they've discontinued the lines, so they're just uh -huh. trying to clearance the stock. So you may find it a good idea to uh, stock up from DCC Concepts. To get whilst... in while they're getting is good. Yeah, because once they're sold, they're gone. That is actually surprisingly heavy. Yeah, well, the, the track itself is is uh, quite heavy, but um, it's an interesting Oh my goodness, setup. I'm starting to get sick because I've just uh, used a lot of glue you in a very the... small area. Mm, yeah. Not the best oh, wait idea. a minute. You could have screwed it in down through the holes. It's got screw holes. See? So you ripped apart my model. I told you, you should have done it that way. Um, oh, video evidence of you being wrong. <laughs> Warbler Production says, I just used the UK TV play to watch the Hornby program. It means I could watch it at my leisure yes. instead of either while the Monday Club is on, boo, hiss, or when I want to be trying to sleep. No, you don't want to be doing that. And also, I tried sleep once. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't rated. It was, I didn't like it. Um, but also, for our, our overseas <laughs> viewers, <coughs> Lord VPN. 
and then um, you could mysteriously um, watch it from the same same place. Other other methods of bypassing geolocks are available. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, B two thousand RO Toys Channel says this evening I'm running my Hornby Murdoch. Gosh. That's quite a valuable model. Duck and Oliver, what are you running this evening, Jenny? Well, we were running the auto packs from uh, Roka models, but they turned out to be just marginally too tall for the um, actual... Oh, what are you doing? I'm attempting something I've just considered. So you just keep going. Um, so uh, they're behind an Alco FA A plus B unit, uh, but sadly we can't get them going around because they really do push... The, um, oh, you, you're making the new scene. I am attempting to make it work, but it really does not want to uh, bring that camera back on. It really seriously does not want to bring the That's other cool. camera back onto, onto line. It's like it's decided it doesn't work and it's not bothering to check. So, yes. um, are you, are you could always bring that up as, uh, a, a new scene. If you I am actually going to deactivate, uh, on-click deactivate when not showing. What, and see whether... Um, it simply does not want to do it. What happens if you click deactivate and then reactivate it? Uh, Worthington Mother Railway says, I use Surfshack VPN from the US. RHP Van Swell says, hello there from uh, Enkusen. Need a good historical background for one Sto RD. Where to find? Not sure what that is, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully somebody else in the channel Monsto might. Be... Rail Depot. Don't know. Um, Sarah Davis says, "Can you not just unplug and replug the cameras?" You would think, but it didn't seem to want to work. Uh, yeah. And Wyvern Model Railway asks, "What is the A4 that is running?" Today we've got Guillemot, which is a 60020, I believe. Let me just double check as it comes round. So, 60020. Um, I just thought I'd ever change. We had uh, Police Chief Wiggum last week. So, um, I thought I'd use one of the more run-of-the-mill ones. Uh, we've got the Hellion Class 25102 in tops numbered uh, BR two-tone green on the topmost uh, track. And then we've got uh, a couple of other 25s, both backmans. We've got 25, um, 25052 and 25095 on the DCC shuttles. D3509 is the Hornby Class 08 uh, uh, shunter on one of the other shuttles that you'll see behind me. We've got an A1 Abaddonian Backman model on a mixed private owner rake. And um, I think that brings that pretty much everything. So what happens if you tell it not to turn the cameras off when not in use? That is a very good question. I am going to uh, do that, but I'm currently faffing about. Uh, you, you're faffing. Turning well, off the, the ability to deactivate them. So these should, I hope, change. Right. Are we going to try something? Yeah. Okay, so let's try another scene. Has the light come on on it? The light is on. The no. light is on. So, John, let me home. try and because we're your mind is not so, your own. Right, so we've basically forced it to find that that's been unplugged. So it might now see this as a new camera angle. No, it really, all the old tricks aren't working. It's like the new version of the drivers they've gone. Now we'll take away the last little hack that actually gets this crap to work. Yeah. Can we still do the videos without layer cameras? Yeah, we can do the videos. Yeah, it's not so a problem. why don't we start that early? Because we do have. Why quite... don't you start that early? Um, Richard Brighton says, whatever Zoe did, the lights in my lounge just turned off. Now that wasn't me, but if you shout out, knock twice if someone's there. You might see what's going on. <laughs> uh, where's where's his By comment? By the way, where's his comment? I can't see. Ah, oh, right, yeah. Whatever Zoe did, the last one I just turned off. <laughs> uh, Robert Steers, MD. Big hello to you. It says overhead clearance issues on Wear Yard. 
I will send my Dremel tool. Um, to be honest, it's the smoke deflectors on the signal gantry. Yeah. So, um, actually, right, swap places. There's going to be a little bit of surgery to have US. Seriously? Out. Yeah. Just uh, you, you talk to the nice people. Jen is going to te attempt open layout surgery. Yes. This is going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because, uh, yeah. Did she just. Yeah, she just pulled the bit off. So. Okay. Well, here we go. Here By the way, uh, beverage of choice tonight a Guinness at zero. I Delicious. I love the horn on this. You do love a good uh, loud horn. Yep, that's going on deck. Only just. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, I didn't tell you to do your bingy bang, bingly bongly belly. Well, it is. Right, come on, shift it. It's my stuff. So, yeah. I highly recommend Guinness Zero. It tastes exactly like Guinness. It's delicious. Right, you back in your place. Yeah. For some reason. Everyone that's... got to see my teddy bear trousers as I walk around there. Yeah. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? <laughs> So, I'm just going to, uh... Worthington Model Railway agrees with me. It is. It's really nice. It's stopped. Yeah, it has rather. Did you break it? I did, actually. Uh, Worthington Model Railway says, did you say Guinness Zero? Yes, it's zero alcohol. Uh, RHP fans told us I have an old 6x6 photo from Sheffield. 1933 <laughs> but quality. <laughs> the A4 rig needs oh. fixing. <laughs> no, 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 come back here, you silly thing. Have you broken it? Did, did you break it? Has everything gone wrong? Yeah, everything. They're black, though. No, no, we've got, we've got an emergency. Jenny has broken an all emergency. of it. Yes. Come on, Richard Brighton says, Jenny's special package was dispatched... What special package, Jenny? You don't need to know. You, it's, it's on a need-to-know basis, and quite frankly, you don't need to know. Madam, you were getting on my, on my case for joining the Airfix Club at £30. What have you been buying? You don't need to know about the £270-odd I've just spent. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Emergency stop, says Charlie Chim. Now we've got a gratuitous arse cam. Yep. <laughs> But can, but can. Oh, for good sakes! Jenny, you're breaking everything. So while you're doing that, I'm going to bring up uh, the first of the videos because that might actually work. <laughs> Guinness without alcohol is a travesty, says uh, Flammer Chairman. I believe that is not correct. Right, I found the reason. What was that? Uh, would you? Sorry about that. We seem to have an issue with the power. Whenever it does that, you have to make sure the power is pushed all the way in at the where back. The, you um, just tap it. I don't know where that is. You've got to do this. I don't know where that is. Mm. Right. I can't see the power. It plugs in at the back. You're going to have to reach in through your glue. You want me to give yeah, it a reach, reach through? Yes, you do. This is ridiculous. I don't know where. Oh, what if I get electrocuted? <laughs> Okay, the power's in. Yeah. So Looks like everything's okay. Sorry okay. about the buzzing, guys. We are sponsored by Billy's replacement speakers. <laughs> uh, but we'll get, we'll get, we'll get through. We'll get through this. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's okay. No need to panic. Yeah. Jenny, don't panic. What have you done? <laughs> you broke it. I, ha I cannot neither confirm nor deny that I have. That I have uh, created a device that has become sentient and is now known as Project Clive. <laughs> Stop messing with the wire and clever, says H. Walker's team. Yes, so, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Southern Train Girl says, uh, that sounded like Iron Horse Railways is there. <laughs> yeah. And while you were bent uh, over the fling doing a gratuitous arse shot, we did get the kind of buzzing that sounds like a fart. So I'm going to blame that on you, my dear, because uh, someone's got to take a... Take one for the team, eh? Yes. Right. What's this? Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 bl
<laughs> so, we're bringing up the first of the... Do you want to adjust your uh, under, under frame? I'm sorry, this this skirt is not doing what it should do. Yeah. These really are not the best noises to hear whilst Jenny's bent over, says Jennifer Horton. Yeah, we've heard worse. Well, I've heard worse. I've been in the same house as her. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says you should be playing a video. I should. But, yes, you uh, should. What's Jenny wrong? distracted me by going, you have to check this out. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, so our first one is from Charlie, Okay. Uh, who says, I found a TARDIS in San Clemente, California. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh my goodness, he actually has. So here we go, Charlie. Definitely found, <laughs> definitely found a TARDIS. That is really cool. I'm, is I am rather impressed with that. Wow, that is cool. Uh, Iron Horse Railway says, Zoe, tell us more about Project Clive. Well, it, I can't possibly tell you that uh, it is uh, an attempt to wire together a thousand spectrums in order to create an artificial brain. I'm <laughs> having a you serious did not hear that issues. From me tonight. So that serious is rather cool. Here. That's two more minutes of track glued down. <laughs> <laughs> says John Gitz. Very nice. Well, well, yeah, we are still live. We've still got the camera, so that's good. Thanks for sending that in, Clive. That was really cool. Uh, Charlie, even. I did. I'm talking about Project Clive. That was Charlie. Thank you for sending that in. And always uh, thought Gandalf was taller. But, uh, oh, he's met Gandalf. <laughs> so proof... That's, I am not Gandalf because I'm here and Gandalf well, we is on the screen. Well, we saw the photo the other day. Somebody sent in a photo of uh, <laughs> you and Gandalf in the same room. Richard Brighton says, Are you familiar with the Green Tardis, which is still a feature in my hometown of Sheffield? No, I didn't not know that. Not familiar with this. My goodness. That is cool, actually. Uh, thank you for sending that in, Charlie. That, a cool Gandalf. That is cool. <laughs> Looks like a Gandalf wax. No, it's the genuine thing. I, I, uh, 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 Gandalf is not me. <laughs> uh, Wobbler Production says one of Google's chatbots is showing signs of sentience. Lambda has gained religion and a soul. Whose soul? <laughs> when you say they've gained a soul, it's like who has gained it? So this one uh, that we're bringing up next is from Charles Gibbs. He says three photos. Uh, there are many models of the this one, but how, in Jenny's opinion, does the Batman model compare with the others? I'm, going to, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to guess what kind of uh, loco this is. Well, that's a pannier. I'm going to oh, say a 64XX <laughs> pannier, because it's got the higher roof, and that's a Q1 in the background. Why? So next... Um, I believe that Ooh. the decoder has failed on this locomotive. Now, you were all watching when that happened. And quite frankly, this is quite bizarre. Uh, yeah, we've got a failed decoder. You all Seriously? saw that um, basically it's decided to fail for weird reasons. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know what to say about that. Can't even read it. Oh, that is a nice uh, vignette the way he's done that. That is nice, yeah. It's quite a nice uh, pannier, the 64XX. I do like, and funnily enough, I don't have any of the 64XX panniers. You now, don't? It's, My goodness. It's um, definitely something... You're having trouble with decoders these days. Are you... Is it just me, or is there an issue with the wiring on this layout that's causing a spike? <laughs> uh, shouldn't be. Right. I've done a CV8 reset. And now it says it's 127. This it's this not. This decoder has gone gone do rally. Yeah. I bet you that what we're looking at here is a nasty brand of decoder. I could be wrong, but this is doing all the hallmarks of what happens when you get those cheap and nasty knockoff decoders, and you think I'm saving a fortune here. And actually, no, no. what happens is you're uh, saving up trouble for later. Yeah, you basically. Uh... Oh no! So you're bad mouthing <laughs> a good one, are you? And it's am... just you. You've just broken it. 
That is interesting. James Pet says, you buy cheap, you buy twice. That is true. But this is not a cheap decoder. So what have you done? I don't know. That was a 64XX class GWR pannier tank. You were right, Jenny. Ooh. So while you're doing that, let's have a small... Uh, Edward Elric says he got these from Guildford Model Train Exhibition. So we're going to have a look at... Ooh. That looks like a big chunky monkey. Hmm. That'll be an LMS uh, black with red stripes. That's as much as I can say. Because I don't know. That is very peculiar. Jennifer Horton says, are they getting damp from condensation? No, no. Um, it's just like, it was working and then it wasn't. Hmm. So, let's... Did it overheat? No, there's no sign of burning on the, the wrapper. <laughs> on the wrapper. Oh, yeah, well, no, they did have, like, shrink wrap. But no, that's quite interesting, because that is a, um, it's actually a Zen Black decoder. So, <laughs> Richard Brighton's ears are just pricked up. <laughs> <laughs> These are, this is, uh, I don't know what this is. LMS Class 5. Oh, mm. right. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that, Edward. Ah, a, a Black 5 the same. Right. Right. So, are, are you going to be able to make this work, Jen? That's the question. The question that all of us... Big hello to Grail the Blackwood Engage Layout. And we've got Timothy Kindhart, who says nice pictures. Dongis Mullero so it says, so it is a bad decoder type problem. Then. It's not, actually. This is a Zen Black decoder. And um, as far as I can tell... Is it something you've done? No, it just, it was working. You saw it going round and then it just stopped. James Pett says, Re I still recommend Zemo where available, otherwise ESU or Lens. Yeah, there's... ESU I do hear a lot about, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you like the Trainomatic ones, don't you? Trainomatic, so uh, so Zen Black. Got a Zen Black in here? I like them as well. <laughs> I just like to tease Jen by prodding her with things. <laughs> Alfonso the Pulse says, Black Fives Matter. <laughs> I love it. That was good. What else have we got here? Uh, let's have a look at what else we have in... Oh, this one's from Richard Podersky. Uh, another one for... But no link. Okay. Big Fair hello to Egg Rider. Uh... Flymo Chairman One. Um, so I had the, had the nurse in today. Sorry to hear. I hope hope everything's all right for you. Yes. Uh, uh, Nineteen sixty-eight concourses. I dispatched a Black Five when I worked at Clapham Junction. She was on a rail tour. Uh, Leslie Gilpin Railway says they ran Black Five four four nine three two on Saturday, first time after a rebuild, and it sounds like it has the same loose rods that it had in nineteen sixty-eight. And Skipsy Train says, get a Rails Connect decoder, very reliable. I know, I know. Oh, these look nice. So, this one's from Mark Wilson. Oh. And it's progress on Paddington, he says. These are nice. Are these scratch built? These are incredible. I don't know. So, um, what we've got here oh. is we've got um, colour aspect signals on gantries. And these are incredibly well made. What are these? Are these part of for that or something I else? don't know to be honest. Are they <laughs> cabinets or something? I was for... thinking cabinets. Mm. Ruben Ashwell says nice signals. Oh. Peter Jackson Cheadle Hill Heath says uh, 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 ooh, good signals. So this is um, uh, really coming together actually. Mm. So this is incredible. I look at it and it's like you're really there. I mm -hmm. do love that bit of bridge as well. See, this is the thing. He's gone back in time and used a shrink ray. This is actual stuff. Yeah, I mean, look at that. And the weathering is perfect. Yeah. So this is really, really nice. Nice close-up. Look at the detail on the ground Oh, as well. it's got like a shunt signal and an ordinary signal that pad on That is very cool. Right, where's my... Uh... Oh my goodness, there he is building them. That is incredible. I'm going to zoom in for this. Mm. Wow. 
all the stages of progress that is that is quite something my goodness all the little fiddly bits as well that's incredible everyone's saying they're impressed yeah this is very cool uh, Mark Wilson says uh, was this probably not I need to move on quick oh okay new project he's doing London Paddington right <coughs> yeah whoa that is incredible. Yeah, the I love the bridge. Is the that level actually of a detail bridge? on the weathering? What's yeah, it looks like a bridge. The bridge? At it... the moment, he looks like he's storing all the bits to put somewhere. Right, right. That and is... there's the photo references. And it's just incredible standard of oh, modeling. My goodness. Mm. Yeah. Although I still say you shouldn't be using your shrink ray to just nick all the stuff from the past and then bring it forward in your time machine. <laughs> That is cool. This is super impressive. Oh my goodness, all the bits as he's working. Now that is incredible. Seriously impressive stuff. I'd love to hear how you do some of these uh, webbing effects because it's all the little bits here and there. Are you airbrushing these or are you uh, doing some other technique? I'd love to know. It prints a lot of stuff out from scale scenes, and I wonder yeah, if you sure could are, add but... weathering to the scale scenes. Stuff. Whoa! But look at that! Look at the little trolleys with the marks where yeah, things. Yeah, that's what I'm have... saying. Are you uh, are you using an airbrush for it? Because I'm considering an airbrush myself. That is some incredible modelling. Mm. Just the attention to detail, even to such small bits and pieces. <laughs> the growler says, "Do you build these and engage, please?" <laughs> Uh, uh, Charlie admit... McGowan, Partick Hill Station says, fantastic modelling, Mark. You must do some instructional videos on these. By the way, Jen, did you know you said that uh, polystyrene cement wouldn't work? Pass. Man, man. I am seriously impressed. Thank you for sharing those, Mark. Mm. So, but yeah, uh, regarding the Engage stuff, I have to admit, now that I'm doing Engage, it is frustrating how much you can't find. <laughs> so we got a next one up from uh, Skipsy Train. Says, uh, "Hi Jenny and Zoe, hope you're well. Just before Christmas, I received the second of two models from Rainbow Railways. The first received in September. These models are resprays into GB Rail Freight and DB Cargo versions of Platinum Jubilee liveries. You may be able to see progress around one of them at stations, which is the reason for the big long gap between this video and the previous one. Fair enough. So we're going to uh, bring that up." And if I can just press the button and grab this URL and then bring this up. And while Jen is doing her thing, I will press the buttons. Here we go. So this one's from Skipsy Trains. It should be quite interesting. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just... Uh, ah, you're grabbing one of your... I'm just grabbing buttons. a spare decoder. So, let's see what we've got. Oh my goodness, that is wonderful! I love the colour scheme. I always love this bridge. It is an incredible um, just setting to watch trains go by, it has to be said. So, oh, Mark says he's transitioning from the 60s to the mid 80s for some of his modelling. A lot of the rail infrastructure didn't change a huge amount over these periods. Look of at time. those colours, that is. The purple and white is just superb. Although some of those ones in the back are quite nice as well. I love a bit of bright look, brightness to the liveries. This is lovely stuff. Mm. Uh, Growler Blackwood Engage Layout says, Zoe, what are you looking for in particular? Um, uh, ships. In my mind, I, I'm, I've got two things I want to do. I want a nice country uh, village style uh, steam uh, diorama that I'm planning to build, which is the one that we're going to take up... Uh, Snowden, mm -hmm. but also I want a nice one that's uh, more display than having to run properly, which will be uh, like a fishing port, a small fishing town with the boats coming in. Because I, I love uh, those old images, and being from the northeast and going to the the seaside a lot, it was always uh, little shipping towns 
So I want to recreate some of the, some of the memories of that. So that's what I'm looking for. But trying to get ships in N-Gage is damn hard. The only one I've found is uh, in the new Airfix catalogue, which is one old big ship. And it's... Oh, which one is it? It wasn't the, the Golden Behind. It's it Golden the... Hind uh, or the other one. I can't remember which. Or Farsa which. or something. Uh, yes, Farsa. And it, it's a, a big sailing ship. It's a mm. proper old tall ship. Which doesn't really fit with what I'm wanting, so it looks like I may have to scratch build. Which I'm happy to do, but it's, it's not quite what I was looking, looking forward to, you know? So this is really interesting. Mm, did you remember to check the sound? Yes, it's up. <laughs> that is... Uh, Skipsy, you've got a brilliant looking layout here. This is so nice. Now your gauge says, Zoe just scratch build a ship. Yeah. Mark and Mike and Puddin Junction says you can get one to one for eight airfix. Just cut the base off. Yeah, I, I'm considering uh, stuff like that. But the other thing I want to do is I really want to go all in mm -hmm. on those uh, magnetized uh, car routes. Oh, with like the Fowler car thing. But they don't think they do them in Engage. No, but uh, I, if I can work out how it's working, perhaps I can modify it to work on Engage. Because it can't be that hard, surely, mm. if, all, if all the basic work's already done. <laughs> Jennifer Horton, uh, I, I do N-Gage. It's quite a few. It's, it's quite popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jen loves double O, but I like really small things, I have to admit. Although I am a bit annoyed that the moment I say I'm going to N-Gage, Hornby come out with, Hey, have you considered TT120? It's like, don't make me confused. Mm. This is really cool, thank you for sending this in, this is great. Oh look at the thatch cottage in the background, that is nice. Oh that is That's lovely. an angle we've not seen before from this. It's, yeah, it's higher up, mm. uh, we've seen generally lower down, so that is quite nice to see. So let me this just... is wonderful. I, I'm going to leave you to do that while I watch this, because this is really nice. Mm. Magna Rail will work in N-Gage, says J. Paul Anderson. Excellent, I'll have a look into that. Because of course, the, once the basic uh, mechanisms are worked out, scaling it down on your own time when you've got plenty of time to uh, trial and error shouldn't be too hard. I mean, I do have a degree in physics. I should be all right with working <laughs> this stuff out. Even if I do toot my horn. <laughs> toot, toot. So oh, track your to the road, then your car has little sliders that run the road. Yeah. Whoa, that... I like the bus... Uh, Thing as well, that bus barely gets through that tunnel, mind. Can't you say tooting your horn? <laughs> Mad Gage says, Zoe, why did you stop playing trains? I thought you were not that interested. Ah, here's the thing: I'm not that interested in the trains, but I am interested in model making. I've been, I've been doing airfix kits since I was a kid. War gaming, uh, space crusades. Did Citadel you actually stuff. do the Citadel miniatures as a kid? A few of them, yeah. You've seen my little guys from Space Crusade, how I painted those. Ah, the dudes. Dungeons and Dragons. I've been into that kind of modelling for decades. And now mm. that uh, I'm with Jen and she's all about trains, I thought, well, <laughs> no, she's not covering N-Gage, and I kind of like really small things, so why don't I go into N-Gage? Yes, yeah, so I'm so all have... about the trains, about the trains, about the trains. No road Jennifer Horton says she'll have a look further. Shipping kits suitable for N-Gage. Thank you. I've been having a look about for them as well. John JMC says, do you have some videos from me? John JMC. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, I do. In fact, John, you are next up in the list. <laughs> John JMC here. A few nights uh, work, but now a class 03 uh, has a tree of lights in each end of the loco. Oh, that's a nice looking picture. So we're going to show this first, and then we'll jump into the video. So what we've got here... Jen, what kind of uh, choo choo is this? That is a class 03 shunter. Yeah, it's got, it's got, it's like Gronk, the beginning. It's got the detail on the sides, the stuff I like. Mm. <laughs> I, I like something that's got a bit of personality to it, rather than just a, a big flat thing. So this is from John JMC. I'm just going to bring this up if I can get there. Uh, wrap that. And here we go. So 
Let me just bring this up and press the button. Here we are. So what we've got here is a Class 03 running on Iron Horse. Uh, so that's not the old split chassis version, is it? Of what? I don't know. No, that's a, a more modern Batman one. They're on the DCC Concepts Rolling Roads. And uh, there you are, the internal lights and everything. That is cool. Nice. Nice bit of work there. Yeah. And knowing John JMC, it'll have full sound, stay alive in the works. <laughs> Why not? Uh, ben Tillett says you can get an Engage airship from Fala. It's oh. a ship of sorts. Interesting. Oh, what, like the, the Goodyear blimp? I am. I do like that idea. Oh, oh and there the it's going. Duff blimp. Oh my goodness, yes, Duff Man, we should do that. I could make that. Yeah. Oh yeah! I am really considering when I... When I smooth, multi we need, we need to visit Germany and look at the miniature Wunderland. Well, my dad's planning a trip this year. It'll be so, lovely um, to go. Um, do you, want, you, you can come as well, we'll do some filming. It's yeah, grand. because they've got that uh, way of doing their aircraft where they take off and fly. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I love the idea of those. Uh, but what I'm thinking is, uh, if I could do it with a very hard piece of transparent plastic, mm -hmm. rather than the uh, wires that they use, if I could do that, then that would be very cool. That was great. Thank you so much for sending that in. That was really fun. And then uh, it would look a bit uh, less obvious. And then I could have it on a kind of diorama as uh, an air show or something in the background. Yeah, you could do that. Like a village air show. With the big ships in the port and the planes going over and overhead, that would be great. Mm. Yeah. Alan Bevan says, I find your layout fascinating, by the way. The trains emerge from the tunnels, then go into the <laughs> distance again. Yeah, it's always uh, a lot of uh, fun to have uh, just visual interest to things, isn't it? Absolutely. So now we've got from Charlie Chimp, uh, Hi Jen and Zoe. Uh, this is is this the famous T gauge bridge people were on about? I took this in a show in Derbyshire last spring. If you look closely, you can just make out a tiny train on the right. Let's have a look. Um, so it may to... well be um, the one that I've seen is a fourth bridge. That's not the one, but I, I suspect oh. that is the similar sort of thing. And it's the only way you can make these huge structures entirely to scale. So this is a very very short video. Like, seriously short. So I'm going to actually start the browser now, and then bring this up and see what this is. Oh! Oh my goodness, it is a tiny, tiny train! That's amazing! Wow! That is so good! That was, a, that was quite frankly, shocking how <laughs> tiny that uh, train was. I think they're really for struggling that. to put this back together. Yeah, these happen. The uh, problem is that the screw is brass, so we can't use the magnetic screwdriver to hold it in place and screw it in at the same time. Yeah, these things happen. I wouldn't worry too much. Oh, so on. this one is from Charlie McGowan. And uh, he says, uh, where are we? This, there's more to come in spite of the track disruptions. This video is from California. So we're going to have a look at some uh, American layout here. Yeah? Oh, California in action. Gotcha. Mm. A T-scale, says Leslie Govan, yeah. Whoa, oh, it looks like nice. a bus. It <laughs> looks like a double-decker bus. Yeah, because of course they've got a much more generous loading gauge, as you've seen by the um, uh, the auto racks we're running Yeah. At. So they can have double-deck trains. I like it. It really is impressive. I suppose given the... Well, given the size of the country, you really do want to get your money's worth when transporting things. Mm. That is a huge thing. I like it. And again, an interesting livery. It's not just blue. Which is the the big problem that I have with ours. So, what colour shall we have? Blue. Paint what? what about the side? Blue. Blue? <laughs> What's blue? Oh, look at the thing now right next to you. The, the colour scheme of British Rail is blue. No, it's like <laughs> green as well. Yeah. All right. So, so what colour should we have? Green. Uh, what about the front? Green. Uh, and the top green. Green. <laughs> it's all flat colours. I like interesting things. I like a bit of dazzle to it. You know. 
<laughs> You're just weird. <laughs> Andrew McN McNella, hello and welcome. That is, oh my goodness, Surfliner. That is big, oh, like nice. seriously chunky. I love the the feel of the, a bit of power, a bit of size to it, a bit of weight. That power is very cool. <laughs> mm. That, wow, it just keeps going. This, that's the other thing I love about the American uh, way of doing things. We're going this way. Who's coming with us? That kind of effect. And it's just huge. Like, there's miles of this stuff. <laughs> the guys arrive before the train, the, before the wagon at the back set off. That kind of thing. It's great. <laughs> right, let's have a... That was brilliant. Thank you for sending that in, Charlie. That was great. Always gives me mad vibes seeing how low the platform height is elsewhere in the world to Ryan Hoss. Yes. Peter Jackson, you are absolutely correct. American trains are impressive. There, there's some... It's when you see it, it's that... Like I say, they're so long that uh, the guy at the front has uh, <laughs> arrived where he's going before the guy at the back has even moved. That's the kind of size you want. So what have we got here? Uh, from Pete Bus says, uh, This is just a shortish video of a brake van ride with a Class 2 on the Barrow Hill Open Day in 2022. Oh, this will be good. Oh, this is Pete Jackson from Cheetle Heath. Here we go. <laughs> Charles Walsh says, now I know why my Amtrak is in the red. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, this is going to be fun. Bring up the browser, and here we go. Oh, that smoke. That looks like a Class 02. I'm going to say that's an 02. Jen, I already said it was. I wasn't listening. No, you weren't. You haven't been paying attention to the Monday Club tonight. I'm trying Madam. to fix stuff. I've got Madam. issues. Madam. Mm. <laughs> this is impressive. Look at that smoke. It looks real. And the way the guys... The animation on this. My goodness, Peter. You've done amazing work. <laughs> Jen is going to be really upset with me after this show for taking the mic. <laughs> this yes. is nice. I like it. Nice trip through the country. Uh, James Pett says he approves of a live fixing live stream. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, there's a railway in America that still to this day uses a steam loco to switch out one of its customers' freight wagons. Wow. I'm guessing it's a preserved line that has access through for a, a, a freight customer. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. That is ra rather spiffing. As I, Spiff I've decided it, so to this say is this is Barrow spiffing. Hill. Yeah. I didn't realise they had. Um, uh, a long bit of line. I, I thought they were on a very truncated branch. It would be nice to see if they've uh, actually uh, uh, reinstated some of the branch that Barrow mm. Hill was originally on. <laughs> what no. Ham Shackerton says, is that Ollie driving? I don't know. I don't know. Ask him. He's in the chat somewhere. That would be interesting if it was. That would be like uh, YouTuber Inception. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I live I live from one road. I get everywhere. Coming at you through your TV. <laughs> as long as it's not coming at you through your vents. <laughs> I sat at home like that. What? What are you? <laughs> I am Gujon John. I'm coming at you through your vents. <laughs> yeah, Gujon John. Wow, that sounded control. a bit like Gandalf. Gandalf, are you moonlighting? No. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm enjoying this. This is a nice yeah. show. Yeah. Well, this is nice. We're getting through some of the uh, the backlog. Yes. Right. I'm just gonna test this decoder. This layout is outside, says Raymond Knight. Yes. You think? <laughs> I've just realised one issue that I've got with my little uh, N-gauge diorama yeah, piece. Jennifer here. Horton says believes that they were there, and there was apparently a uh, 15XX on the other end of the train. I've just got one issue with this uh, thing. I have a feeling my big Yankee local. Yeah. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> oh my goodness, it is. That's like Uber Micro. That is hilarious. It won't. It's the same. Oh my god, I can't even put the tender on. The locomotive itself is the size of this place. Mm. Uh, of, of this little diorama. That is so funny. Mm. So, um, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to try and sit it on the track. This is so funny. 
to me anyway. The, the difference in size between the Japanese uh, <laughs> diorama and the American loco. <laughs> You've broken it. Oh, for God's sakes. They are. The, the American Loco is the length of the uh, diorama. And, uh, yeah. Right, press the button. Press it. Oh, no, 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 no. I think it's this. Oh, is it? Surprising? Try it now. No, try the other one, remember I showed you oh. before. Yeah. Pull it out, just slide it a little way. It's like it stalls out on the point, just at the wrong point. Right, now press the reset. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't this. Yeah, so this, everyone's saying, what a big one, it's huge. The tender is not on this. This is just the locomotive. And it only just fits. <laughs> you really need two of those little Kato bases, says Peter Jackson. I do. I have two of them, but one's curved. So we've got two different types. And the idea is that I'll build one up, and then I'll build another one, and see how it goes. Oh, yeah, because I bought you a curved one as well. A curved one and a straight one. Mm. And we're going to try... I'm going to do them different styles. <laughs> we'll see how it happens. Uh, Richard Sadowski says, Zoe, did you get my Mayflower video? I don't know about the Mayflower, but I'm not finished with all the videos yet, so let's hope that we have it. Um, we have a steam train on a carpet from Richard Sadowski, which is called a, a, a certain other YouTuber special. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ham says, Skin Mama, you'll have to make a tunnel at each end with a little gap between them. I think that the idea is that you just stick them together as different funny things, which I'm perfectly fine with. Have you broken everything again with your gratuitous arse cam? Now, I did wonder whether it was that one again, but it turned out it was that thingy in the tunnel. Ah, right. So, I'm going to put this back on. So, we're going to roll out the red carpets. Uh, says Richard Swodowski. Here we are. Here we go. No! Have you broken it again? I'm trying to put this on the track. Go on, just. Do you want me to I, wait? I'm until having you put no that luck in? here whatsoever. <laughs> stupid, stupid thing. I'm going to wait until you finish putting that on before I reset this. Yeah. The tender slipped out of its connector, causing ah. a short. That really does annoy me. Right, is it on? No, you'll you don't worry, you'll be the first to know. No, I won't you'll be the first to know. You'll right. tell me. Press the button. Okay, pressing button. There right. we go. So uh it's interesting that they've got the check marks on the uh the buffers there. Are they sprung buffers? So we'll have to mark them down if they're not. Oh that's where where they've been like cleaned with emery cloth. Oh for God's sake, stupid you're really not happy, are you? This doesn't... It is running, but is it's... Is it the locomotive that's the problem? I don't see the carpet here. <laughs> oh, well, they're rolling out the red carpet for it here. Right. Yes, yes. Here we go. It's on the red carpet. It's coming. It's on its way. Is it the locomotive that's uh, damaged and not the... No, this is a different chip. locomotive. I changed the locomotive. Oh, right. And this one, it's got dodgy pickups. Ah, here oh, we go. Yeah. They're rolling out the carpet. <laughs> oh, this is daft. <laughs> oh. It's going to completely ruin it. You're going to have sliced Funnily carpet. Enough, no. No? I don't think it'll be in tip-top shape, mind you. But, no, it won't really ruin it. It will... Uh, it's going to be weird, though, and slightly hilarious. Come on, let's see what happens. Might need a bit of carpet shampoo. <laughs> a bit of shaking back. <laughs> yeah, put the freshness back. Richard Adversi says, it's not one of my video, but I thought you might... Oh, oh, uh, oh um, no, I'm sorry. You we're, can't we're not if... share other people's... Yeah, we actually... Take... Yeah, we Stop. don't have permission, then. Stop. 
That, that's, yeah, sorry, I didn't realise. I'm realize. sorry, but we can't share other people's videos without their permission. I'm sorry, it, but it's, yeah. we were, oh, it's, it's a big issue. It's, it's a big thing that uh, we have to stick by because we don't have clearance, basically. Yeah, uh, it's all about fair use and fair dealing. If we've got permission, we can show stuff. But if we don't, yeah, we otherwise can't. it's copyright infringement. Yeah, and we can't. We have to. We all have to play nice. But we have put the link in, so if anyone wants to have a look, they're they're welcome to. But yeah. we can't. We can't. So just, can't just have to it. reiterate, please, uh, yeah. don't share other people's videos got to be without their permission. Mark Wilson says that's my grandma's car. <laughs> <laughs> was <laughs> now, now she's got three. <laughs> oh, I'm having no luck tonight. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. you're having a bit of lack of luck. Luckless, luckless, hey, lack of luck. Like I Jenny, what? We have very few left. This is interesting. Are we nearly up to date? Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Charlie has sent one saying, uh, I actually have some American stuff on the layer today. I thought I would send you the attached. Uh, uh, Duff liner details. Okay. Ooh. Ah, Richard, I'm sorry, we've got uh, we're, we've got the wrong end of the stick. He says, that was for you to watch. Uh, you mentioned it last week. Ah, right, it's fair enough. I'm sorry, we got the wrong end of the stick. It's not him doing it, it's right, us. That's fine. But that's fine. Thank, <sighs> thank you for clarifying. Sorry about that. XRCUN42 says, hello, sorry I'm late. <sighs> Ooh. A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He rides precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. <laughs> so what we've got here is uh, the livery. Uh, that, so we get a close-up on the, that locomotive that we were having a look at earlier on. They are very interesting. They've got those uh, um, break uh, a bit more like a car, isn't it? Interesting. It's got a it's got a lot of personality to it. This this is really nice. Ben Tullet says, "Imagine explaining to the office and road and rail that it all goes wrong. You thought that running over a cart was going to be fun, but it didn't go well." Yes. <laughs> Worthington Model Railway says, "My wife says I have way more patience with locos not running than anything else that doesn't work as expected." Well, you have to. You have to treat them nice, otherwise they're not going to be happy. These are really nice uh, livery pictures. I'm very happy with them. Thank you very much for sending those in. That's great. We've got some more updates from Mark Wilson. He says, I've been concentrating on the goods office that used to run alongside of Bishop's Road Bridge. Doesn't help that Isambard designed the station with broad gate trains in mind. Well, you know, these things happen. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Right, so, um, yeah. For a second, I thought that was the real thing, I have to admit. And then I saw the train on the... On the oh, wall. for God's sake! You're not having a good night tonight, Sam. No, I'm not. It's just irritating the hell out of me. It's, it's that shorting on a point in the tunnel. It seems to be, yeah. And then it goes back up, which is fine. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it's really having trouble now. Whoa, stop that one, stop that one in the tunnel. Okay, I stopped it. What is wrong um, with it? I don't know, I'm going to have to let you get in. Don't worry, I'll put everything down and I'll go and do it. No, you have to have a look, because I don't want to break it, Jim. Here's the thing, I don't want to break it. So, we'll be back with you in a moment, guys, because, uh, unfortunately, it's kind of, the, the locomotive she's having a look at is stuck in the, tr in the, the tunnel, and I can hear it running as if it's trying to move. But it's not moving. Nothing's going. Right, so, so uh... I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right, pulled it out. But we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. It's going to be okay. Yeah, seems happy now. Mm -hmm. Right, budge over. It just wanted some attention. Right, uh, so these <laughs> are more of his build. So yes. he just sent these in? Yes. So we're getting very up to date. Excellent. So we've got, like I said, I thought this was real until I saw the <laughs> photograph that's on the wall. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? And there it's, ah, 
So there's the comparison because you can see the tall bit there. So is that building still there? Because the next one there, at the bottom, it looks like it's burnt out, like somebody set fire to it. Yeah. Which I presume is why those people are on the roof. Or is that a kid? Don't I know. don't know, but it looks burnt out. Raymond Legs says you might have a bad traction tyre on that locomotive. Whoa. It doesn't is have that, traction tyres. Is that part of your layout? Is that... it, it would appear that that's um, part of his layout. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. That is really coming together nice. That is something special. Absolutely. That is wow. I'm amazed. The quality of your modelling is so impressive. Absolutely. Always, always very <laughs> impressive. Look at that. Oh, I like that. It's like with a weird angle. And yeah. look at how that building is supported on girders. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether is Mark doing um, that representation with that, or I, I don't know whether he's got enough. Uh... That is so, so well done. <laughs> So there's the, the distance, so you can see the building right there. That is so well done. I am super impressed with these. And they uh, finally get to see it in the in the flesh, in the full colour. That is incredible. That is really good. Mark, I am overwhelmed with how good this is. That's so good. As James Pett says, impressive. Yes. The Growler Blackwood Engage Layout says, large vodka for Jenny. I feel like I need it. It's like... Everything is going, oh, oh, I see your attention is taken elsewhere, here. <laughs> ah, Mark uh, Let says, me slam dunk your face in the toilet and see how that works It out. wasn't a fire gem. What was it? Bomb damage. Bomb damage? Yeah. Now that is interesting. Oh, right. So w what year would that have been? Would that have been Second World War? Probably. Uh, SHGP says, you should have had a video on the 9th of January. You haven't shown it. Irish Steamier Layer, Ballyconnell Road. I will have a look. So how, how up to date are we getting? Um, we have two left, Edward Elric and Craig Thomas. And oh, then Peter, uh, Peter Cheadle, he is sent something. I'm going to quickly check in the spams for the 9th of January. Right. Mm -hmm. That's going back a fair bit, but we'll find it. So... No, uh, I, I thought we had it there, but it was actually spam. <laughs> <laughs> Someone trying to sell me yet yeah, on their um, ability to sell things. Like, well, that didn't work out, did it? <laughs> oh my goodness, the stuff that's in my uh, spam folder is hilarious. Do you need a loan? How about some perfume? Like, no, the one that always gets me is attract men with bigger breasts and it's very un unspecific on whether you're using breasts to attract men or whether you're just merely making yourself attractive to men with moves. <laughs> it, it just it isn't specific. Well, whatever enough. floats your boat. I just, I just feel that the, the attention to grammar would make the scam a lot more convincing. I'm sorry to say um, that I don't have that link that was sent on the 9th. I'm looking on the 9th and it's not there. Mm. Yeah, it's just not here. Sorry. Yeah, it's just not here. I'm not, yeah, not at all. So mm. I don't know what's happened there. So I'm going back to the Monday Club list now. Going back to the 9th. Nope. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you found it? Yes, it's marked as the uh, played, but we haven't played it. I don't know what's gone on there. Right, we've got it. Well, did we play it? Uh, it may it says be... we haven't. Okay, well, oh, we did play this one. I do remember Spotting. playing it. Right. We'll play it again. SHGP. Here we go. So Davis says, Jenny, <laughs> watch the chat from Iron Horse. So, Zoe, don't play play my video I sent in. Okay. Have you played it yet or not? I don't know. <laughs> so has he just realised he's accidentally sent us one of his uh, <clears throat> private videos? A, a private video? Mm. No, no, no. Or maybe, maybe there's, there's um, maybe he's decided that the lone trumpet solo was not 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 up to scratch. <laughs> 
night gaiters, and track men with a huge auto rack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is nice. Yeah, I remember the bus. That is, um, oh, yeah. That is actually one of those uh, road systems. I really, love really the road good. system. It's mm. great. And on a big layout like that, it works so well. You can have them just like trundling around. Yeah. I'm guessing it does a loop and then comes back out. Oh, yeah. The seat, right, you do remember because it's like the proper rail bus. We, yes. met, we talked about this. But it's always nice to see it again. This is nice. This is uh, very, very cute. Yeah, yeah. I like it. The oh. Flymo chairman were oh. absolutely. Don't, uh, don't forget to tickle that like button, share the video, and also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. So, um, <laughs> Sarah Davis says, images of gram Grandma Flump on the trampoline now. <laughs> Uh, Finley Carden says, Hi Jenny, how's the 5 inch loco? Any plans for videos? Absolutely, yes. we do have plans. It needs to go for a boiler test. Probably do that in around March, something like that. Um, Leslie Gilpin Railway says, Some interesting London and Northwestern Railway locos in that LMS bus. <laughs> and Crider says, Iron Horse is just copying Hornby, preparing a video release and then having to pull it at the last minute. Ah, for, for inspiring. Ne <laughs> for nebulous. Editorial reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Wobbler says, "Are you okay, sir?" Yeah, for the most part. It's... Can you hang that up where the other AE uh, model the, uh, is? The little tumor is not uh, causing too much trouble tonight. Uh, yeah, it's but if, twice every now and again. If anybody heard the um, the the triggery word of tumor, it's a non-cancerous yes. tumor. Uh, it, it's non-cancer. It's just annoying. Yes. <laughs> James Railway 2023 says 4:45 a.m. in Asia, but woke up early to join you today. Just started my first YouTube channel, James Railway One. Well, well done. done, and it's welcome it's, to the it's very the rewarding sharing videos on YouTube. Yes, as we said. when you get a bit bigger, then the trolls come out from under their bridge. But, but um, by that time, you ignore you've, them. Yeah, you've mm. got yourself established, and you know how to just ignore them. What you got to <laughs> tell yourself is. It's just jealousy. They're jealous because you're talented yeah. and they're not. This is a really nice uh, little uh, layout. I'm enjoying it. I say little. It's, it's a lovely layout it's for what trains massive is go, what it is. go by. <laughs> and I, I love that scenery. Yes. The trees and that tree there. We were talking about dioramas earlier on. And that tree there, you talk, uh, when I talked about a feature tree as a focal point of a diorama. That's the kind of thing you want to That's about, the sort it? of tree. And you can really go to town making a really quite fancy, um, uh, a very fancy uh, a little diorama. Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath says, glad to hear it's not too serious. Yeah, it's, it's just painful. Mm. That's the biggest thing. It, it's painful, it's slowing me down, it's affecting my work. Uh, but uh, it's not life threatening, it's just annoying. Ben Tullett says, anyone seen the recent YouTube short Hornby did today regarding the 2023 catalogue? No. Very cringy. I haven't seen that. Um, to be honest with you, sometimes yeah. these things happen. Bedrock underscore dash Jenny says, uh, says, Jenny, how do I share my models with you? Uh, you need to either upload to something like video sharing service like YouTube and then send us the link. Don't send the video as an attachment. Send the link to zoe.robinson at gmail.com yes and that zoe spelled z-o-e it's the european spelling of zoe uh if you want to send pictures you can send them as an attachment uh jpegs are the best and just attach them again send them to the same email address and put monday club in the subject and that just helps Zoe yeah. to If you put uh, Monday Club it. in the subject, what actually happens is it automatically gets filtered into a list for me to work on and then we can show it. Right, John JMC says, I love it. It's thanks to Jenny and Wardle Road I started to do mine and thanks to them both for the help in setting it all up. Yeah. Um what was yeah. that in reference? Oh yeah, so YouTube. Wardle Road's a great guy. Absolutely. Um uh, and exarkun42 says, what email is Zoe dot Robinson, that's Zoe spelt Z-O-E, and that's at gmail.com. James Petz, uh, 
uh, he um, uh, rather predictably approves of pre-grouping layouts. Mark Wilson says, is anyone else watching Pete Waterman's Making Tracks 3 video? Very interesting. I think a lot of people have got it on the old uh, TiVo, just uh, setting that up, getting that ready. And if anybody's TiVo? Watching... What year are you from? <laughs> 1996, represent. Um, also, if anybody's wondering about the DCC decoder thing, the decoder worked just fine in a different locomotive, and a different decoder worked just fine in the locomotive, which you'll see is now spinning around. So we don't know what's going on there. Very, very strange. It's why I was distracted earlier on. Uh, Valleys 56 xx says, I had a weird mole removed from my chest under local so I could watch them do it, but it was benign. Odd to see it done. I personally don't like watching I will stuff. not be doing that. <laughs> no. No. Uh, um, with an actual tumour, I think you don't really want to watch. No, I just want it gone. It's painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if every time I lean forward to do something like work, then uh, it causes an incredible amount of pain. It's like a burning. That's very annoying. Andrew McNeely says, Do you recommend starting a YouTube for my first railway? Also, how did you name your railway, please? Um, having a YouTube is entirely up to you. It's about what you feel most comfortable with. Um, and uh, in terms of layout names, what, um, what I actually did with mine is... It's a marshalling yard inspired by Tyne Yard, but it's not actually Tyne Yard and it's not Tees Yard either. So I thought that um, I would name it Weir Yard because the River Weir is the other major river up in the northeast. Uh, and that's how the name came about. Retro Mickey 82 says, What she broke? Actually, no, nothing at the moment. I do like that, that 240 outside framed um, Midland Railway locomotive, that is, I really do like that. Clearly something we've not received ready to run. Although the tender looks an awful lot like the tender on Hardwick. Now that is the class 02 that, um, uh, there, which, uh, lovely little locomotive, we've got a... That's a 61XX, a large prairie tank. And then behind that, um, it looks like a Lancashire and Yorkshire pug. But I suspect it may be something like a Peckett. Um, it's not a Lancashire and Yorkshire pug, I don't think. Uh, I'm going to say a Peckett, but I don't know what type. And then that is the D11, uh, Butler Henderson, lovely locomotive and... Uh, uh, let's just see, it's a naive gauge, just having a YouTube channel means that you will make much slower progress on your layout. However, you get to share your hobby with others, which makes it more fun. They're, oh, Gronk! Gronk it Gronk up! It Gronk it up! It up. Gronk, Gronk it up! Not a cult. Gronk it up! Uh, a very, very quick, fl quick flick through Whoa, the 16-ton um, uh, mineral. That's the head code on a Deltic. These are Warship and Western nameplates. Flame cut panel from 82001. 76029 as well as see there in the background. Um, so, uh, really, really nice collection there, actually. Mm. Uh, flame cut panels there. I always find them quite sad because they get cut out when the locomotive is being scrapped. Another one there from 45043, and it's a selection of um, St. Paddy's of Class 55, 08956, um, that's quite a late Class 08, and then we've got a pair of Class 20s in DRS livery, right, are you ready on that the button? That was great, thank you very so much for sending those so in. Much. Um, Exankun42 says that D11 is stunning. It's in Great Central Railway, fully lined green. And actually, the National Railway Museum did do a model of it um, some time ago now, and I actually do have a model of that uh, lovely locomotive. So, so uh, this one's actually from me. So um, this is uh, being submitted by the Cupboard Monkey. Just to show off again so the proper is... uh, amount. That's the... Uh... Now, that's the little diorama piece. It's very, very small and just shows you don't need a lot of space to produce a diorama. Now, yeah. she's going to make this scenic and I'm really looking forward to that. Will your little bungalow fit on there if you took it off I its base? I engaged bungalow. If I took it off the base, 
would fit right next to it. But what I'm thinking is not doing that. Mm. Because that will fit in better on the uh, little uh, country village thing that I'm thinking of. Just to show the size mm. of the American locomotive. It's, it is a big chunky monkey. It's a big boy. But it's mm. not the big boy, it's just a big mm. boy. <laughs> Jennifer Horton says, Kitmaster did a plastic kit of the Midland 240 in the 1960s. I guess the two <laughs> didn't survive for air fix and day to use it. Certainly oh, well. one that would be nice to see ready to run. And given that there is a propensity at the moment to see um, a great many of the National Railway Museum survivor locomotives make it through to ready to run model form, I think it's only a matter of time. I mean, we've had Hardwick, uh, we've had Butler Henderson, Ooh. we've had the Midland Compound, Robinson 8K, um, and uh, what are the other are more unusual? We've had the Northeastern Railway ES1. It's quite an unusual one. So I think it's only a matter of time, um, and I think that. Um, that is definitely a little beauty which might feature on the radar of various So Jenny, people. what is this? This looks like a Class 47. It's from Bedrock and it's, uh, mm -hmm. I Are believe looking... it's, he's a new contributor to the show. Oh brilliant, so this is, um, a, they, I take it they've weathered it themselves. It's a it nice, looks rather cool, doesn't it? Nice weathering job, uh, good attention to the patterns that weathering uh, actually tends to fall on a locomotive, so you've got the, the dirt frame dirt built up from the bottom and just feathered out into the cleaner top. Um, Exarkun42 says, I want to see Aerolite done ready to run. You and me both actually. I think that that is a really, really nice, um, uh, just nice a, model. Just as a comparison, the American one didn't have the tender so it wasn't a complete thing. That's the complete British one. Okay, so you need to hold. Oh, um, I need you to hold it over there. All oh, right. Apparently, I've got so to. Thank you for sending that in, Bedrock. That I'm was really on nice. Holding duties. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm if you can just show that. There you go. There's the whole of a UK one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just for comparison. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is cool. That's one of your favourites, isn't it? Uh, I love this livery, and I'm yeah. uh, totally grateful to. Uh, the Monday Clubber, who's very, very kindly sent this. I believe it was 3B Rail, wasn't 3B it? 3B Rail. Yes. Um, so very, very kind. That was cool, yeah. So uh, there we go. Right, nice 47, good weathering, says Valley's 56XX. Richard Swiderski says nice weathering. Fly my chairman once, Jess, has it been on railhead um, treatment work? Um, and actually, yeah, that is the pattern of um, weather you do tend to see when they've been on those kind of workings. Now we've got an interesting one here from Exarchon42 says Ooh. it's a Backman 812 painted as an alternative take on Donald from Thomas and Friends. Oh right. Oh. So um, this would be, is... Um, is this this is this is the one that was released through Rails of Sheffield or is this the one that was part of the Thomas the Tank Engine range in the US? But certainly, so um, basically it's got a Caledonian blue rather than the black that Donald yeah. and Douglas tend to appear in. Um, always really difficult to do lining, but um, and that's nice and done the, the, the Northwest Railway. Very much better than I mm. would have. That is nice. It's an interesting take on uh, Donald and Douglas, certainly. I like and the wheels as well. Yeah, well, um, we've actually got one there. Oh yeah, with yeah. the wheels. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie Chimp says everything's bigger in the States. Yeah, I want a steak from the States. In that case, I don't want to go because my stomach will be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, interestingly enough, I was on What's Neat This Week. Big up to uh, Sir Ken of Patterson and the What's Neat This Week posse. Thank you, Exa, for sending that And um, uh, uh, Robert Steers was on as well, actually. He organised to invite both myself and the Cupboard Monkey on. And um, they'd been to Sugar Fire, um, a barbecue uh, pit house restaurant, and I was so jealous because I love ribs, and apparently barbecue is like another religion in uh, that particular part of the US. So um, uh, just put, put them, FedEx them over. In a in a hermetically sealed rib humidor, and uh, I, I, I'm not allowed to overnight them. 
You know? um, I'm so sorry to hear that, James, Railway 2023. Um, I hope that modelling uh, helps you. So, uh, I'm sorry for your loss, man. So sorry to hear that. Yeah, it, it's never it's never pleasant. Absolutely. And um, I, know I lost uh, my, uh, my first fiancé, and it's... <laughs> It's very hard to get over it, so I do completely sympathise. Yeah. Um, Pick up your staff, Jenny, says Mark Holt. What? <laughs> Is the Covered Monkey streaming? I will be streaming tonight. Yes, but, absolutely. Um, I am not Jenny's staff. Jenny, yeah. uh, Jenny might be the front of house, but we are a team. <laughs> and I will keep reminding her of that until she really realises it. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> so what we've got here from Richard Brighton... Ah, right. is uh, for those of you who say I don't do analog this is a DCC locomotive control for analog accessories block instruments and interlocking so it's a rather hmm, rather so, substantial uh, set of uh, points there so that's the actual signal box um, diagram so that's the diagram they would have in a signal box yeah. So that they knew which lever did what. And this is for um it's there's some of his layer. levers. <laughs> yes, recognizable as being these bad boys, but yes, um the uh, big big ones, but definitely here's the wiring. The interlocking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh there we go. Mm. So that's mm, that's rather a lot. Which Leslie means, Gilpin Railway says, isn't one of the guys on What's Neat the owner of that restaurant? I think they might be, actually. Probably um, is, yeah. But certainly, I really do want to go and visit. They talk up the uh, the Sugar Fire um, restaurant and really, really do, uh, does make me want to go and visit there. So this is... Uh, uh, this is actually, uh, this is the last uh, one that we've got time for. Yes. And this is uh, Richard Brighton's father, John's Railway. So we've been sent this link as well. And uh, once the advert mm. is over, we'll actually Peter have a look Jackson, at Peter Jackson, don't worry about the Class 28. It's not a factory sound fitted. So I know that they did a recall on that. They had, I think they had an issue with the decoders. Um, but that's only on the factory sound fitted. The um, DCC ready ones are not affected. And indeed, if you even if you have a sound one, if you took the sound decoder out, then um, it would work perfectly fine with any other. So this is from Richard Brighton, and it's actually his father's layout, uh, and it's an incredible uh, EM gauge layout run prototypically. And it's set on the line which actually passes fairly close to where Rails and Sheffield currently is. Andrew McNeela, the Monday Club starts at 7pm GMT. Or when the UK is in summertime, 7pm BST. So basically whatever time 7pm is in uh, in the UK, that's when we start. Mm. And Chris, did you, yeah, all you can eat American buffets are amazing. I can remember being in Florida and I bugged my parents and said, I want to go to one of these all you can eat for a dollar ninety nine places. And they You'd refused they refused to let me go and see if I could make them regret that sign. <laughs> so I have never been to an eat all you can one apart from they do eat all you can Chinese buffets over here and, <laughs> and uh, yes, well they used to. They regretted that when you mm. came in. It's like, No, she's here. <laughs> Pretend we're closed. <laughs> So let's have a, a look a bit further in so we can see a bit of this. So this, this is, um, it, it's... Here we go. Or not! Yeah. There we go. Look oh at the weathering God. on these, and it, it just shows that a subtle weathering really does bring out the best yeah. of wagons. Particularly those white insulated wagons. Nice collection of stuff there. This is, of course, remember it's on EM track, so you can see the difference that that makes. Love all the little traders labels on that van there. Yeah. So so nice. They're just trundling along. Peter Jackson at Chill Heat says, Well, they say seven PM, but it's actually whenever Windows allows it to start. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I wish it wasn't true, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> This is really nice. So this is um, uh, photographs from the real station before it closed. 
and these have been used to great effect to um, uh, set the model prototypically correct. Yeah. I don't believe the station is there anymore. It's one of the stations that was a casualty of beaching. Ah. The line is still open, still goes through. Uh, but um, it's... Um, so yeah, we're back to the model now. And you can see there the... I think that's the loco... The loco shed in the background. I do love the bogey bolsters. I've got quite a few myself. I need to get more. That's a bogey bolster A, a lot of bogey bolster C's. That's a, is that a black five? With some of the porthole coaches. Really, really nice. This is rather special, isn't it? And that bolster train still going past. And, and to be honest with you, uh, Jubilee. I think that's a Jubilee with Mark 1s. The way the back scene is blending into the background, if you just glance at it, uh, not being paying attention, it looked real. Absolutely. This is really nice. Mm. James Railway 2023 says, Making my first YouTube channel has been a help. It's not very good. Oh, don't talk like that. It's, everybody starts Everyone somewhere. starts in a way that they start. You will build yeah. up and then you'll look back and you'll think, well, yeah. I, I've come a long way. And that's what makes it special about the hobby mm. and uh, being on YouTube and sharing it with people. When you look back, yeah. you see how much you've progressed. Mm. Never think, oh, it's bad. Think, I have improved. Yes, yes. Um, and um... Guys, we are now past nine o'clock. So thank you so much to Richard and his father for sending right. that in. That Worthington really Model lovely. Railway says we have an all-you-can-eat Sunday brunch locally, but it's nineteen dollars ninety-nine. Still, still fairly reasonable for, for and, an all-you-can-eat. Uh, that's not bad at all. Says happy, happy don't way. have many all-you-can-eat buffets in Vegas anymore. I suppose they're going a little bit out of fashion. And Nick of Bleston High Level says, James, I will check your channel out in a while. I'm sure it's great. Absolutely. So you know, small steps. I mean, it's how all all great channels grow from the first video. Absolutely, and like I said, mm. what you're what you're doing is not showing how you've started, but where you're going to and how you're getting there. Absolutely, always look at it from the positive side because that's what you want. But guys, thank you so much for coming along tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this. And Jen, do we have a sponsor? Yes. The Monday Club comes in association with Broker Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. So there we are, and we will be reviewing the auto racks from Roca Models, uh, possibly for next week's video. We've got them running at the moment. Unfortunately, you just see them there in the background. Unfortunately, uh, due to camera issues, this is the only camera that seems to want to work at the moment. Mm. Uh, but you can see those auto racks going around behind the Alco uh, FA A plus B unit. Uh, and um, a big, big thank you to Roka Models who uh, UPS them over from the States for us to get a first look at. Now, FedEx, the... not UPS. Oh, is it FedEx? It is FedEx. Yeah. Um, and I'm told that the um, well, these are production models, but these are the review ones that were flown over to uh, the HQ in Montana. Um, but the production models have just docked at the port of Seattle, so we'll be starting to be sent out. So you can go over to rokamodels.com and get them ordered. There's a huge range, five different styles that represent the auto racks throughout their entire lifespan. They're also featured on this week's What's Neat This Week with Sir Ken of Patterson, where you can also see Robert Steers from Roker Models talking about these fabulous auto racks. And he actually shows some of the um, uh, test shots of the sides of the racks, and it has to be seen to be behold. It's such an amazing standard of injection moulding. It's really pushing the limits of what is possible, and certainly 
These are definitely groundbreaking wagons, so do check them out either over on What's Neat This Week, uh, for this week when the video comes out, brokenmodels.com, and we will be doing a full review video as well. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. It's been great having you company. We talked a little bit about diorama planning, and we've also actually managed to get up to date on the videos. And a big hello there to, J um, to Johnny Ortiz. Says, Hi, everybody. Train crazy Kevin in the Philippines. Great to see you. Let's wheel out the map. Philippines is there, and it's really good. I think you're the first person that yeah, we the map upside down. Oh, did I? There we go. So Philippines over here. That's not right. That's your finger, Jen. Mm. Anyway, let's just put the map away. <laughs> but certainly, it's always great to see people from around the world joining in. So great to see you, and I hope everybody's having a great time. You take care, and until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take care. Bye for now. Three now departing is a 2108 service to Groove Street Yard, stopping at Bolton Trinity Street, Bolton Trinity Road, Eindhoven, because we got lost somewhere in Philadelphia, we don't know how, we will get there eventually, Fire Mineth Tatus, Tatus Neweth, a few other places, and then on to Grove Street Yard. That's the 2108 service to Grove Street Yard. If you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was has gathered there together because today's the day that Jenny plays lots of noises over my singing on the Monday Club. Good night. My goodness, Jim, there are those noises. Bop, bop.